everybody! I'm Dr. Sarah Wooten, your friendly neighborhood local veterinarian. I am here today to answer your burning question about flea collars. So are flea collars safe for cats or are they not? Watch this video to find out. Are flea collars safe for cats? Well, yes, <laughs> if they're labeled for use of ca in cats. So there are some flea collars out there that are uh, over the counter, right? A lot of these flea collars you can just buy at your local pet store and they need to be labeled for use in cats. Some flea collars are for both dogs and cats and some are for just cats or for just dogs, right? So more than finding things just for cats, as far as the flea collars go, you're more likely to find things that are labeled just for dogs because the ingredient in them is toxic to cats. So you're always going to want to follow the instructions on the label. Turn that thing over, take a look. Uh, it will give you information as far as how often to change it out, what are the adverse signs to look for, is it safe for cats. Follow these directions unless otherwise directed by your veterinarian, okay? And only, only use products that are clearly labeled for use in cats because some flea collars uh, that contain permethrins or emetrans, for example, are toxic to cats. You can cause a cat to be very, very, very sick if you put a product on them that is only licensed for use in dogs. In general, flea collars that are not safe for cats and cannot and should not be used on cats. Anything that contains permethrins, P-E-R-M-E-T-H-R-I-N-S. Permethrins, no, not in cats, don't do it. Also, you don't wanna use any collars that contain the product Amitraz, A-M-I-T-R-A-Z. No Amitraz. No essential oil collars. No, I know there are some collars out there with essential oils in them that say, this is the latest and greatest natural thing to put on your cat. But those essential oils, some of them can be toxic to cats. Most of them, if not all of them, are highly irritating. So don't put essential oil uh, collars on your cats. And then lastly, avoid products that contain organophosphates. Those are pesticides and we don't want those on our kitty cats, okay? So that is kind of the basic gist with flea collars. Are they safe for use in cats? Yes, if they are labeled clearly for use in cats. If they are for dogs only, don't use them. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, well, what about Soresto? Oh, what about Soresto? Good for you. You are an informed consumer. I am very proud of you. Thank you for asking. I would love to talk about Soresto. So Soresto is a, uh, it's a flea collar that is released by Alonco. Alonco is the company and uh, it's been around since 2012 and it's been highly effective. I have uh, prescribed or I have uh, sold Soresto collars to many clients, right? And never had a problem. Never had a problem. Um, but <laughs> a little less than a month ago, there was a, rep a report that was released by the Midwest Center for Investigation, uh, Investigative Reporting, and USA Today. And that alleged that these Soresto flea and tick collars that are labeled for use in cats have harmed many of the dogs and cats that wear them, as also caused harm to the humans. So the EPA, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, stepped in uh, and they regulate pesticide-containing products. And according to the EPA, they received 75,000 incident reports of dogs, cats, and people who are allegedly being harmed by the collar. Uh, and this included some deaths and some incidents with people. So what makes the rest so different than other flea collars? Well, it was originally developed by Bayer and it includes two pesticides, imido imidoclopramide, all these big words, right? Imidoclopramide and flumethrin, flumethrin. Uh, so imid imidoclopramide is used in uh, other products but Soresto is the only product that uses flumethrin. Um, and in general, this collar is super convenient because it's labeled for up to eight months of flea and tick 
uh, prevention. And that is awesome, right? So, but these reports were not awesome. So after this report came out, uh, the company was asked by the U.S. House of Representatives subcommittee to remove the product from the market, just temporarily while they try and figure stuff out. Well, turns out Alonco refused, reiterating that it stands behind the safety data of Ceresto generated for its registration and monitoring, right? And that was a, a company press release that was put out. Now, in Alonco's def defense, they have had this product on the market since 2012, and they have used this product on more than 25 million pets since 2012. And in the US, their adverse event incident rate, right? So the, the amount, the percentage of uh, adverse events associated with those 25 million callers is less than 0.3%. And the major uh, majority of the incidents have been not serious, right? Uh, you know, maybe some, some redness or hair loss, or there's just something about the particular animal that didn't do well with the collar. Where are we at? Where are we at on the Ceresto collar? Um, so Alonco currently is cooperating with the, the government <laughs> and wants to explain to the media, including all of us, right? Um, how these reports, how they have um, been able to refute these reports with toxicologists and veterinarians and that correlation does not necessarily mean causation. We all love that phrase, right? Uh, and that there could be an issue with counterfeit collars that are purchased by consumers unknowingly online, right? So that's been one of the main things. People are always like, why do I wanna buy this from the veterinarian when I can get it cheaper someplace else? Well, sometimes you don't know what you're buying, right? And humans are tricky and they can make counterfeits and those can have problems. So one of the things that will be interesting to see is, is this an issue with counterfeit collars? I don't know. Where do I stand on the Ceresto collar? Well, I have used the Ceresto collar. I have used it on my own pets. I have prescribed it to my clients. I have never had an issue with it. So it'll be interesting to see how this whole thing shakes out. If you're using a Ceresto collar and do not have any issues with your pet, uh, if you were my client, I'd say, well, you might as well just keep using it, right? If you're worried and you're looking for alternatives, well, there are alternatives out there, okay? A couple of more recommendations from the FDA. More things you need to think about when you're using these products, even over-the-counter flea, flea collars. Always read the instructions before you use it. Even if you've used the product a whole bunch of other times, uh, things could have changed, right? So read the read the label, read the warnings, um, and if you don't understand what you're reading, ask your veterinarian. Follow the instructions, specifically how they say to use it on the label. If it says use it weekly, um, don't use it daily. If it says monthly, don't use it weekly. All those things. Um, if it's for if it's a product that you're supposed to spray in your yard, don't put it on your pet. The only exception to this is uh, in some cases when your veterinarian changes uh, the way the product is being used. They use their specialized training to change something, okay? If you're using a spray or a spot on, like a topical, um, apply it to pets separately and keep them separate until it has dried, until the product is dried. And the reason for this is some animals like to groom each other and this could particularly be a problem if you're putting a product on a dog and you have a cat and your cat likes to groom your dog. This is very important. And then always you want to wash your hands after using the product, store the products away from food or children, right? We don't want to be eating or accidentally ingesting the stuff ourselves. And then after you have used the product, especially after you've used a new product, you're gonna to wanna to monitor your pet for any side effects. Uh, this is particularly important the first time. So if your pet has a bad reaction to a flea collar, take it off of them immediately. If your pet has a bad reaction to a flea or tick product, call your veterinarian immediately. Um, in some cases, your veterinarian may recommend that you bathe the pet uh, or you rinse them with large amounts of water. Um, if your pet shows any of the following, call your veterinarian, okay? After applying, if you notice, 
dizziness or not wanting to eat or not being coordinated or vomiting or diarrhea or drooling um, or any kind of seizure activity, definitely, right? Um, you're gonna want to call your veterinarian. So there you go, probably way more than you ever wanted to learn about flea control in cats. Are flea collars safe for cats? Yes, if they are labeled for use in cats. The Soresto collar, we'll see how that shakes out. If you're using it and it's not causing any problems, keep using it. If you're worried about it and you wanna try something else, talk to your veterinarian about the alternatives that are out there. Thank you so much for watching. I am Dr. Sarah Wooten. If you have questions or comments or concerns or you just wanna say hi, go ahead and leave me a comment in the, uh, the comment section below this video. See, I'm pointing down, that's where it's at. Uh, also, if you like this content, please uh, hit subscribe. I am here a lot giving you all kinds of information. So thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again soon.